This AI agent books me 10 to 20 booked calls every single month. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build this thing out yourself, whether you're a business owner looking to implement this for you, or if you're trying to get into the AI space and start selling these, well, you could be selling these for between two to $3,000 a pop. So I'm gonna be covering exactly how to build this, deploy it, you know, how all the nodes are. And of course, I'll have this template for free in my school community. So check out the link down below in the description, join the community download the template, and then you can just plug and play. And if you're new here, my name's Elliot. I founded ManyFlow AI, which is my AI development company. I'm also a content creator and AI educator, trying to teach you guys how to do this as easy as possible and get started into the AI space. So with all that being said, let's jump into the video. So I've just pulled up my website here, and if I just start kind of scrolling through here, we're gonna get a pop-up in just a moment right there. We just got a pop-up saying, Hi there, welcome to ManyFlow AI. I'm curious, do you already have a specific solution in mind or are you just exploring how AI could help improve your business? So immediately what we do is as they're scrolling, as they've been around 10 to 15 seconds on the site, this pop-up immediately notifies them and asks them a question just to kind of start a conversation. So we could be like, I'm not sure yet. What can you do? All right, I'm just kind of starting the chat. We specialize in helping businesses explore and implement AI solutions tailored to their needs, whether it's automating processes, improving customer experiences, or optimizing operations. Would you like to schedule a consulting call to discuss how AI could benefit your business? Maybe here it sparked some interest. Maybe I could be like, okay, well, I'm a real estate company. Uh, I need some help with lead qualification. Let's just go for that. I need help with lead qualification for my real estate company. Can you help? All right, so we're not really sure what we want, but we know that we need some automation for lead qual because it takes way too long. So maybe let's just see what, what it says. Yeah, we can definitely help with lead qualification if you're a real estate company. Could you share a bit more about what you're looking for, like specific challenges or goals? Once I understand better, we can move forward with the right solution. Sure. Now, when I get a new lead, I have to manually call them. I'm thinking we could have an AI agent in WhatsApp or something to automate that. Got it. Sounds like you're looking to automate and lead follow-ups through WhatsApp with an AI agent. We can definitely help you build this. Would you like to schedule a call to discuss details to get started? Let's do it. And the really nice thing about this AI agent that it has access to my calendar and it's quite intuitive. So first of all, it's going to ask for my name. So I'm just going to say my last name. Nice to meet you, Elliot. What's your email address so I can send you the meeting details? So let's just go ahead and give one of my spam emails here. Okay, provide the email. Great, and what's your name of your real estate company? Let's just do Real Estate ABC. Okay, so we got the name, email, and the name of the company. And the next is going to ask me a time to book in. Perfect, I've got everything I need. House Thursday, August 21st at 10 a.m. So it took the current date and it looked for a, a day in advance and start with our lowest availability at 10. So maybe I could say, no, 10 doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. What else you got? Thursday the 21st at 10.30 a.m. Let's do on on Monday at two. And today is Tuesday, so it'll know to book the following Monday, not yesterday, because yesterday was Monday and we can't book that. So now you already told me August 25th at 2 p.m. works. So this is a good time for you. Yes. So we're just giving confirmation. All set, our team is looking forward to speaking with you and then it ends the chat. And now on my end, what actually happens is if I go over to Slack here, we can see in one of my channels, booked calls, it says ManyFlow bot event scheduled discovery call. Here's the start time. Here's the meeting link, meeting with this person, because that was the name that I provided. I behave it my own name. Here's the company name. And the details shared is a summary of that transcript. It says the user is seeking assistance with lead qualification for their real estate company. They currently face the challenges of manually calling new leads and are interested in automating this process specifically, right? You could read the whole thing. And then we have our meeting link. And then this is a shared channel with my team so they can 
also be in on this call if they choose to. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is built out. We're going to jump over to VoiceFlow. And again, if you join my free school community, you'll have access to this template and you can just download it. So this is what the workflow looks like. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the beginning here. Here we have our start trigger here, and then it goes into a message block. Hi there, welcome to Manyflow AI. I'm curious, do you already have a specific solution in mind? Or are you just exploring how AI could help improve your business? And then we're saving the entire user reply, which is the last utterance. So I went ahead and dragged in a capture step and selected entire user reply. And then it goes directly into agent one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on agent one here. And this is just my prompt to really understand, are they looking for a consulting call or are they looking for a discovery call? That was kind of a, the main purpose of this. And my focus was to identify where they're at in this process. So do they already know what they want? That's going to be a discovery call or they're just looking to have AI. They know it's beneficial, but they don't really know how to get started or what they want. So that's going to go the consulting route. So this agent is really just identifying where they're at in this process. And then that's going to help us understand when we see the, the lead in Slack, we'll be like, okay, they're looking for a consulting call. They're looking for a discovery call. So that's going to help us get prepared for our call. Looking at the prompt here, go ahead and look for primary objective, determine whether the user has a specific AI solution in mind, or if they would benefit from scheduling a consulting call. Your task is to compute whether the user is better off for a consulting call or a discovery call. I added some interaction rules, important behavioral rules, the tone and the style, and then a knowledge base rule here. If I actually go back, well, you'll see here I have knowledge base on. If I go here to knowledge base, I added a, a document with a bunch of information about my company so that when they're in that flow of determining if they're better for a consulting call or a discovery call, they could also be like, hey, by the way, I have a question, and it'll pull from the knowledge base and be able to answer it from there directly. So if I go back to this agent and go to the bottom here, I gave it the, the variables. This was their response. Here's the conversation memory uh, and then some more kind of the flow of how I want it to behave. And then you'll see here there's two exit conditions. There's book a call for a specific solution or a consulting call. So this is what I was just talking about. If they're looking for a discovery call, it's going to trigger this path. And if they're more suited for a consulting call, it's going to trigger this path. I wrote here all in caps, do not trigger path until user says yes or agrees to the call. Because what it was doing is it was just before finishing its analysis, I guess, or determining whether they were a good fit for consulting or discovery call, it was just exiting the chat. So I made sure to really iterate to leave if it's a consulting call or a discovery call. So that is the purpose of this agent, just determining that. And then it sets a variable here, the booking type to discovery call or the booking type to a consulting call, depending on which exit path they take. This goes into a set step. So what I'm doing is I'm setting a variable with a prompt. So I'm asking it to analyze the voice flow memory to give us that summary that we had in Slack. So it's taking everything that was said previously from now and then creating a nice clean summary for us to be able to see in Slack and prepare us for our call. Once we get that summary, again, it's not gonna be outputting anything. We're just setting the variable kind of like in the background, in the back end, right? It's not actually outputting anything. It's going to go right into agent two. Agent two is very basic. I also have the knowledge base on as well. I'm getting a phone call, I apologize. And what this is doing is simply getting the first and last name and getting the email address and their company name. So you're getting those three pieces of information in order to proceed with the booking. And once that's done, once they're ready, trigger this when the agent has successfully captured the user's name, email, company name. And those are the required variables, right? So I give it a little bit of context. If I click on name, I'm saying this is the user's full name. Make sure to store with first letter capitalized for a clean full name. Contact the user's email address and then company, the user's company he owns or works for. So these are the required variables before exiting. This then goes into a get current time. This is where it gets a little bit more complex here, but again, you'll have access to this template. All this does is it just grabs the current time. So we're using JavaScript here to give us the current time because like I said earlier, if I say, oh, I'd like to book for Monday, it'll look at the current time and it'll look for the next Monday, the following Monday. So it's super important to get the current time at the moment. Here we then have a little bit more JavaScript, but we're setting variables with it. So it's a set step. We're creating a start time and we're creating an end time. So this is setting two days ahead. So for example, if today's Monday, I can't book today, I can't book tomorrow, but I can book on Wednesday. I'm setting it two days in advance, again, for more time for us to prepare. And then we're setting the end time 
and this is giving us a seven day period, right? So I'm looking for the whole week of availabilities. So now with this availability, with this window, I have seven days. I'm gonna call the cal.com API to give us all the availabilities from that week. So again, this is another function. It's more code that calls the API directly. And these are the variables that are required for the API. We have the time zone, cal.com API, the start time and the end time. These are all variables that we've defined. And then here I have an event type ID, except I haven't defined API key. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. But we have our event type ID, called this 30 minutes, and then we're outputting this to converted availability. In order to get your API key, if you go ahead and go to your settings here, secrets, we can add the API key here directly. And you wanna go to cal.com, you wanna make sure you do have an existing booking. You're gonna to go to, scroll down to settings. You're gonna look for API keys. And then you're gonna create one here, copy the key and simply add it here. And then in order to get the event type, you're gonna go back, click on your event type that you, have, you must create. I have a 30 minute meeting here. And then I'm grabbing the ID up here. It's in the URL. You grab that ID and you'll be able to place it here. So now that we have everything needed for the API, we get all of those availabilities back and we're storing it in that variable, right? Then this goes directly into agent three. Now I think agent three is probably the most important one here. Here, this one has access to, listen for other intents is on. We don't need to have that on actually. I can just remove that. But if I go to the prompt, what this is doing is it's really analyzing all of the availabilities and then booking us in. I also added the knowledge base in case they want to ask questions as they're getting booked in. And this prompt, if we go down, we're looking at the conversation memory, the time zone. I'm really reiterating all these variables for it. All available times for the user converted availability. That was that one variable from the API. Here's the current date, day of the week. I really wanted to understand exactly what day it is today. And for this model, I am using GPT 4.0. I believe I was also using 4.0 for all of these. Nope, this one I'm using Claude for Sonnet. And then for this one, I am using GPT 4.0. So I like switching it up sometimes with my, my models. And so again, this one here is grabbing, making sure to agree on the correct time for the user. And I have two exit conditions, success and future date. So success is once they've agreed to the proposed time from the AI. And then future date is if they ask for any time that's past that week. Instead of we could rerun it to get another seven day period, we could do that, but I kept it simple for the user. And what it's going to do if it does trigger the future date is it's gonna say apologies, looks like I have a limited access to the calendar. So I'll make it easy for you. Just pick a right time that works best for you right here. And I just give it my actual Calendly link so they can just book in directly that way. But let's say they have finally agreed on a time. It's gonna go over to another set step here. If I go ahead and click on this, go here. Here what I'm asking it to do, based on the availability provided to the user below and the time the user confirmed, output a date and time that the user selected. Here are the available times. Here's the user confirmation. Only output the timestamp in ISO format, nothing else. Do not include the Z at the end. If no year is provided, assume the year is 2025. So I'm here, I'm determining more things. This is converting the, the, the selected time, again with JavaScript. And these are the variables from our selected time. And then we have our time zone as well here. Now what this does, it calls back the API again, and this is to actually make the booking. The first one was to get the availability. This one is to get is to create the actual booking. We're giving around the same variables here, except I'm including name, contact, the API key, the event type ID, and it's outputting as booking link as well, because we're getting the actual Google Meet link out of this API as response. Uh, and the reason why we need email is you also need an email to call this API to be able to send out the email confirmation. So that is creating the actual booking. And then it goes to a, an API block here in order to send this over to make.com to add this to our Slack channel. So I'm grabbing all the variables that I've mentioned, name, the email or phone number they provide, the company name, the booking type, if this was either discovery call or consulting call, the agreed time that they picked, the description where we had AI analyze the memory, and then the booking link. That is all we're sending over to make.com. And then it ends with all set. Our team is looking forward to speaking with you. Now, if we go over to make, this is going to be, I have a placeholder right now, but essentially you'd want to send it to your webhook. 
go over to make.com and that is literally the automation. It is two modules. So the webhook here, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab the webhook URL. You're gonna to wanna to run it. And once you run it and you call this, let's say you just practice going through the flow, it's going to trigger it and then give you a bunch of data. And then from this data, I am mapping it to my Slack channel. So if I go to Slack, here I have my own bot that I've created. I'm not gonna cover how to do this in this video, but essentially what you wanna to do to create a, a Slack bot so you go to the Slack API docs, create one, and then you'll be able to add it to, to make. I'm selecting the channel type private. This is the name of my channel. And here is the message that I get. And these are all the variables that I'm mapping out from my webhook here. And it's all of the information that came directly from VoiceFlow here. And now in order to deploy this, you're gonna go ahead and go to the interface tab, click on widget. And what you can do is scroll down here to modality and interface, and you can play around with as much as you want, right? I have the popover mode to make sure it pops up. I have the appearance and style to colors of my liking, added some logos here. And then I believe that is all I have on. And then in my school community, I'm gonna have the updated code that it pops up after 10 seconds. Right now, this code won't pop up at all. You'll have to manually click it. So make sure to grab that code. It's gonna be in my school community and then just change out the project ID. That's all you do wanna change is that project ID. Then your bot's going to be able to pop up after 10 seconds, five seconds, 20 seconds, however you wanna decide. So thanks for making it till the end of the video. Building something out like this becomes super powerful, especially when you have a lot of website traffic and you wanna be able to convert all those leads that are browsing through your website. It's gonna pop up, start a conversation with you and try to get that lead to book a call with you. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you guys wanna do. And I will see you all in the next video.